Hi, my name is Kit and I teach philosophy at Azim Premed University. And I thought I'd tell you about what I've been doing today. In the morning I woke up and I did a bit of research into philosophy. What I spend most of my time thinking about is how scientists reason. Scientists start with this evidence and they seem to make these leaps to theories. But they leap in ways that are really accurate. They're able to make the right predictions. They're able to build technologies. And it's a puzzle how you manage to do that. If you go and ask scientists, and, and I do, you'll often get different answers. Answers that can't all be right. So I actually spent the morning thinking about the role of emotions in scientific reasoning and in reasoning in general. I was reading this interesting paper which was trying to show that Emotions aren't actually obstacles to reasoning well. But actually, if you want to reason well, you have to have your emotions in order. Emotions are actually part of thought. I even went to the extreme of having an emotion just is a thought. So that was my morning. I, I read this. It included some neuroscience, some psychology, a bit of philosophy. One of the wonderful things about philosophy is that you get to read so many different disciplines. And then after I'd done my research, I came in to teach. And the course I'm teaching at the moment is actually closely related. It's philosophy of science. We have 30 students in the class and they're humanity students. So they've done uh, English, they've done a little bit of philosophy and they've done history. And many of them have got sort of detached from scientific thought, from scientific thinking. And the point of the course is to get them to a place where they can pick up a scientific research paper uh, and read it and decide for themselves what they think about it. Use those skills that they got in philosophy and history and English and apply them to that research paper. So we go through the course and we do some philosophy of science and we gradually build up towards the end of the course we study quantum mechanics and we actually read Einstein in the original. Part of the point of philosophy is you can't read a watered down version. So we, we learn the maths of Einstein and we read Einstein's papers and, and Heisenberg and Bohr and all of these great minds. And students get to decide what for themselves what they think about quantum mechanics. And then we do the same thing for development economics. Right now we're just getting into the course, it's the beginning of semester. The course is maybe a bit different from how stuff is taught in school. There's a class where I'm at the front and I'm saying stuff, but it's very interactive. There's lots of questions and answers. And then after that, there's a problem class where people get into groups and they have uh, debates and they have puzzles to solve and competitions against one another. But it's all building up to the seminars. In a seminar, there are 12 students and me, and there's a question, sometimes two questions. The questions often come from the students themselves. It's about what we've been studying that week Maybe it's, how do scientists manage to make that leap? Maybe it's, is there a leap at all? Maybe it's, do physicists reason it a different way from economists, from geologists? Some question that might come from the students, and then the students debate it. And I'm there to occasionally prod them and say, oh, I didn't understand that bit. It's also assessed in a way that's a bit unlike school. So every week, students will write a little journal based on what they've read and what they've understood. The first question just, maybe what you've had before of, of just understanding a text, but the second and third questions in this three question journal are making students come up with their own ideas. The, the point is that students understand. And how you come to understand things in philosophy is you get to a point where you see all the other views. And once you're there, you see, oh, but there's this other view over here, which is different from these views. It sounds like this view, but it's, it's actually a different view. And, and, and my one's this, this view that I've come up with is a, is a better one. And you take that to the seminar and you say, hey guys, I've come up with this idea. And someone will say, oh, but it's that other view. No, it's not that other view. It sounds like that other view. Oh, but there's another problem with it here. And, and you get into debate and, and you'll knock against each other like stones, sharpening one another. When you're doing that well, that's deeply thrilling. It's tiring, it's hard work, it's rigorous, but, it, but it's absolutely thrilling, both for students and, and also for me.